You know, I was thinking. Um, I was talking it over with the Lord a little, and yeah, I was wondering. Do you think that God loves you less when you sin? I mean, when you fail him, or fail in what you're doing, or commit some sin, you think God loves you less? Do you think he loves you more? In that, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. If while we were yet not saved, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, does God love you less? I've been thinking about that a lot lately. Do you think maybe that uh, God loves you more? Could God love you any more than what he's already done? You see, there's this concept we have sometimes about God is love and about God's love that we try to identify it in our terms and make it after our image. But sometimes we make the mistake of not realizing that we are created in God's image so that we are the poor example and he is the perfect example. So we're just an image. He's the reality. So when we talk about God's love, when we say God loves more or God loves less, you really can't put it into our way of thinking because God doesn't love more or less. God is love. Not God loves less or God loves more. He is love. That don't make sense. <laughs> and it's not supposed to because sometimes things about the reality of God are meant to be greater than anything we ever dreamed of or imagined. And his love is one of those things. His ability to keep loving in spite of our sin, in spite of all that we've done because of his love demonstrated for us by his son dying and being raised from the dead, was how God determined to show us he loves us. You see, most of us, when we do something wrong, we go and hide. We, we want to be accepted because we've been rejected and failed in our own ideas of what we think we should have done or could have done or would have done had we done better. But we don't really have the ability to do better. As a matter of fact, the Bible says we don't even have the ability to be better. We, we really can't improve on the image that we are. We are, quite frankly, corrupted beings. We are failures in creation. We are God's flawed examples of what happens when something comes into a perfect world and corrupts and makes it imperfect. That's what corruption is. That's what sin is called, corruption. It is a separation from perfection to imperfect. Now, when the perfect came, he brought the ability to change incorruption to put, uh, to change corruption to put on incorruption, to change the imperfect and remake it into perfect. 
So, do you think God loves you any less? I mean, really. Could he love you any less? Could he love you any more? Or isn't the fact that God is love means that God loves you? You see, sometimes people get this confusion about love where they think that, oh, if they only had not sinned, God would love them more. And so they go out to prove to themselves, really, that God loves them by, oh, Lord, I promise I'll never do that again. So they, they kind of bargain on this idea that maybe if God forgives them, you know, that they could do better and be better. And so they go into this whole working up this, this feeling inside that, I just want to feel like I'm accepted. I just want to be accepted. God, forgive me. And God goes, done. <laughs> and we go, no, no, wait a minute, God. You can't make it that easy. You got to add something to it. You got to make this redemption more of a process, you know, and more of an attitude that we have to participate in. We have to, you know, really feel like we repent. We have to really work up the feelings inside. We have to show and demonstrate that we mean it. Try it. <laughs> I don't think, now maybe it will work for you, and maybe you feel like once you get it all together and you feel so bad that you come running to God and then you want to feel good because you go back out and try to do better and fail again, that you somehow got the process down now of you got to feel bad in order to feel good. Really. You got to be guilty before you can be forgiven. You got to be remorseful before God can love you or forgive you. I think Jesus said ask. I think Jesus said if we confess our sins he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all righteousness. I think Jesus made it easy because what he had to do was hard. So the hard part is over and the easy part has come. And the easy part really is just admitting you need help. And God already knows that. So what we're learning is we need to go to God when we sin, not to ask for more love or to be loved, rather just to restore a relationship that's been wounded that we have hurt him by doubting his love for us in such a way that we would grieve him because we didn't measure up to what we wanted to be while he's still working on causing us to become the image of his son. Because I'll be honest with you right now, and I'm going to tell you straight up. You ain't perfect. <laughs> As a matter of fact, given five minutes alone, you'll prove that you're not perfect. In fact, given ten minutes alone with some conflict in some way, some shape or some form that will frustrate you, you prove you're not perfect. And that's why we have grace, and that's why we have mercy. Because, you see, the person who gives us grace and the person who gives us mercy is God. Only a perfect love could extend grace and mercy to someone like you and me. Because we are corrupt. And until this outside flesh, this corrupted being that we are, puts on, in corruption, a new body, we are going to sin. We will fail. We will screw up. And given that God knows that, do you think he loves you any less?
Do you really think he does you more? Or do you think he's already demonstrated his love to you in that he gave his only begotten son? We demonstrate our love by our feelings. God demonstrates his love by his action. Don't let feelings rule your understanding of God's love, but rather let God's action determine what his love is for you. In starting your day, follow Jesus. All who keep his commandments and follow his plan and continue to live with him and stay with him, abide in him, and he lives in them. Some people wanted to follow Jesus, but they were afraid they would be put out of the synagogue. John 12, 42. Some people are still afraid to follow the Lord because they might be put out of their family or their group or even their church. Eventually, there will only be one person to face, and that is God. You won't want him to say, I had so much for you, but you didn't receive it because you were too concerned about what people thought, or you were a people pleaser. Jesus wasn't swayed by men's opinions, or their threats, or their judgments, or their criticisms. Follow Jesus and you will enjoy life. Because when you find how much that God has done for you, when you realize how much he's demonstrated his love to you in what Jesus has done, then I think you're going to find that, you know, God doesn't love you any less when you sin. God doesn't love you any more when you don't. God doesn't operate in those kind of ideas that we have. But just like your children, whether they fall down and scrape their knees, you don't chastise or you don't yell at a child for falling down. And learning to walk happens to fall down over and over again until they learn how to walk. You don't beat them up and say, why did you fall down? But you pick them up, set them on their feet again, and help them to learn to walk. Did you know that your whole life is going to be about God teaching you one important principle? You're learning how to love. <laughs> and you really haven't a clue how. <laughs> and by the end of your life, as much as you fall down, you'll begin to walk in His love. You'll begin to walk in His light. You begin to walk in his mercy, in his grace, in his peace, in his kindness, in his gentleness, in his meekness, in his temperance. Because you're sure not going to walk in his judgment. <laughs> but you are going to learn that, as strange as it seems, God really is love. And he doesn't love you any less when you mess up. And he doesn't love you anymore when you don't. God just loves you. And because he does, it's that love that draws us to repentance, to wanting to be less like who we are and more like who he is.